Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. We have a beautiful sunny day outside to film a video and uh, so we're set up on the family ping pong table here in the garage and this is going to be a nostalgic one for me because I haven't done this type of grow in a long time. We're going to do a straw bucket and uh, this is one of the first texts that a lot of people who are just starting to dabble in gourmet mushroom cultivation they start out with. Um, the bucket tech. So uh, I don't really do this anymore. Uh, I prefer sawdust, aspen shavings, you know, wood-based grows. Straw has its advantages and disadvantages. So straw is cheap and uh, this is a really effective way to grow, especially oyster mushrooms. Um, but uh, straw is also pretty messy and uh, your yields are comparatively low. Although if you're using big containers, you can still get some nice clusters of mushrooms. So we're going to be doing a Italian oyster or Pleurotus pulmonaris grow on pasteurized wheat straw. And I'm going to show you the straw in a minute here, but I just want to show you my cropping container. So I'm using a seven gallon bucket. Uh, when I used to do a lot of straw, this is what I used. I either used these or I would do like big plastic bags or columns. And I've drilled 12 holes all around the outside of a bucket in the, uh, it's like a diamond pattern. So these are three eighths inch holes I drilled in here. And I do recommend going with three eighths. I wouldn't go smaller because these holes need to be able to support your clusters of oyster mushrooms that are going to fruit out of them. And what will happen is if you drill really small holes, uh, the clusters will actually, you'll get these big clusters, they'll get heavy and they'll snap right off and you'll find them laying on the ground. So you need a, a little bigger hole, like three eighths is perfect, I think. Uh, and that way you'll have a strong attachment point and your clusters won't end up snapping off on their own. They sort of pick themselves. Uh, so I have, like I said, I have 12 holes drilled around here. You don't want to go crazy with your holes. You don't want to like just jam this thing full of holes because then you're going to get a bazillion tiny clusters of oyster mushrooms and that's not what we're trying to do so that's what i prefer uh we also have a nice tight fitting lid because we're going to completely jam pack this boy full of pasteurized straw and so we need a nice tight fitting lid that'll snap on there because you really want to compress your your straw down into this bucket uh, you get way better cropping efficiency if you pack it nice and tightly. We're going to talk about that a little more in a second here. And uh, so that's our bucket. Uh, you don't have to use a seven gallon bucket. You can use a five gallon bucket, three gallon bucket, one gallon bucket. Pretty much any plastic container will work. And the one nice thing about this tech is that uh, this is a reusable container too. So you're not creating plastic waste. And if you do multiple buckets, uh, you can stack them right on top of each other and make like a bucket totem out of them. So I have four pounds of grain spawn and that's typically how much I would use at least for a seven gallon bucket. Uh, I don't like to go lighter than that just because the grain spawn is going to be your main like nitrogen additive with this tech and straw yields relatively low uh, when compared to you know other typical growing substrates so the uh, the more grain spawn you use basically long story short it's going to boost your yields when you're using straw so i'm going to use four pounds today because i got a four pound bag of italian oyster so if i was making my own spawn uh, i would go as high as like maybe six pounds of grain in a bucket this size and that'll just increase your colonization rate and also increase your yields. So the way we're going to pasteurize our straw is, and there's a lot of different ways to do this, but I prefer a cooler pasteurization and you don't need a big fancy cooler here. Um, you don't need like a Yeti <laughs> or anything to hold temperature. Uh, this is just a Coleman cooler. I'd say it's cheap, but nothing's cheap nowadays. It's probably like a $75 cooler, but it is a Coleman Extreme 5, and it's pretty good size. Um, I don't know if it has like a liter measurement or whatever on it. Not that I see right now. But uh, just nice, clean cooler. And uh, I got a plug in the one end, so we'll be able to drain our hot water out once the pasteurization is done. But uh, this is the easiest way I've found to do it, especially for someone who's just starting out. You know, usually you have a cooler laying around. Uh, you can do some barrel tacks where you basically have a steel drum on a propane burner and you can make a like a screen basket that goes down in that for your straw. Uh, you'll find that online, that technique too. 
Uh, but like I said, I always like the cooler tech. You don't have to constantly maintain a flame under it. The cooler holds your pasteurization temperature as long as you do it right. And I'm going to explain everything to you step by step in the video here, exactly how to do it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys the straw I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using wheat straw. And uh, once we get that covered, we're going to go ahead and pack our straw into the cooler and I'm going to heat up some water on the stove and we're going to get our pasteurization started. So let's talk about straw. Uh, I'm going to be using wheat straw for this grow. That's typically what I use when I'm doing straw grows. Uh, wheat is really plentiful in my area, wheat grain, wheat straw. And what I do is I buy small square bales at my local country store and i think they're around eight ten bucks for a small square bale of wheat straw right now other types of straw will work like oat straw rice straw i know those work well too um, i just use wheat straw because it's plentiful in my area fairly inexpensive and i get great results but uh, as always part of growing mushrooms is learning to use effectively whatever is you know cheap and plentiful in your area but anyway, uh, so what we're going to do is I have some wheat straw that I already shredded in a separate bag here. And what I do, I just have a chipper shredder that I run it through just to kind of shred it up a little bit, make it a little finer material. Um, and I'm going to measure that up and put it into my cooler. Now, you don't have to shred it. Uh, you can use it just like this. By shredding it, uh, you'll just be able to pack it a little more tightly, you'll have less air pockets, and you'll get, get uh, better cropping efficiency. But I have some in a separate bag here that I've already run through the shredder, and that's what we're going to be using. And we're going to be growing, as I said, in a 7-gallon bucket. So the way to do this and make sure you have enough substrate is to, whatever size cropping container you're using, you want to fill that twice with dry material. So I have a, just a clean seven gallon bucket here. I'm gonna grab my shredded, pre-shredded straw and I'm gonna fill this twice. Now you don't have to pack it really tight, just kind of snugly fill it, fill it, loosely pack it in there. You fill it all the way to the top twice and that should be about the perfect amount of substrate by the time you pack, pasteurize it, pack it in tight, spawn it and everything. That should be the perfect amount to fill this bucket once, our final cropping container. So you don't want to short yourself on substrate. Uh, that's the moral of the story. So whatever size container you're using, just make sure you fill it twice all the way to the top before you put your straw into your, you know, your pasteurization tank or cooler or whatever you're using. So we're going to grab our pre-shredded wheat straw here and we're going to measure it up and get it into the cooler and then we can start our pasteurization. I'm gonna kind of level everything out in here. Whew, dusty. All right, so see it only filled the cooler about halfway. Get some water all heated up and ready. So the water that's going in initially is gonna be around 200 degrees. And uh, then I'm gonna balance it out uh, with some water that's down around 180 until I get the temperature right where I want it basically right around 180 because it is going to drop a little bit over the hour as it cools and uh, hopefully we'll start around 180 and end up around you know 170 160 something It took about three of these big stoneware canning pots to uh, get enough water in there. And I had the water about between 200 and 180, I would say. And uh, a couple things I forgot to mention. As always, if you guys have any questions, uh, just hit me up in comments. I always check comments. So I try and cover every step, but there's a lot of steps when you're doing this mushroom stuff and I inevitably forget something. I forgot to tell you that straw floats, so you need a way to weight it down. So I just have a piece of plywood in there with a dumbbell, 20 pound dumbbell on top of it. So that's gonna hold our straw under. You can see I got a thermometer in here, We're right about 180. And you can add a little cooler water or boiling water, whatever you need to get the temperature right. <clears throat> And uh, so, yeah, we're going to close the cooler lid. And if you have any gaps 
like I have here. Um, I'm just going to use these little uh, like oven mitt type things. Use that to kind of seal up your gaps. We're going to just let that go for about an hour. And I did move my cooler over to the side of the table here too because I was worried about the weight in the center of the table. We love, uh, you know, breaking tables here in Buffalo, but we're not at a Bills game and I don't want straw all over my garage floor. So uh, we're going to try not to bust this table today unless we start drinking beers. We'll see how it goes. But uh, anyway, so another thing I forgot to mention is drilling holes in the buckets or plastic in general for mushroom cultivation. Um, this is a nice thick plastic, so it drilled pretty easy. Uh, one good trick, and I showed it in one of my other videos, is you always get these little like fine plastic, you know, little sharp plastic burrs around the holes, usually when you drill plastic. So that's why I have the torch out here. Uh, this is my all-purpose mushroom cultivation super torch, and uh, I use this for sterilizing my needles. And it also works great for just hitting these holes real quick. Just give them a little tap with the torch, and that'll meld up all those little uh, plastic splinters and it'll help to clean up your holes you can do it from both sides of the bucket but uh, that's a great little trick you know if you're doing like mono tubs anything like that where you're drilling plastic you're gonna get the those little you know splinters around your holes from drilling and those will clean it right up so we're gonna let this go for an hour and then we're gonna spread it out on the table and we'll bust our spawn out hours up so our pasteurization is done Pop the lid here. I just, uh, oh, that wasn't good. <laughs> so check our temperature again. You can see, hopefully you guys can see that we're just above 160. So we are perfectly in that pasteurization range for an hour from 180 down to 160. And now I'm just going to drain it off. So this is the cool thing about the, uh, the cooler method is we got a plug right here. So I did take the cooler, I got it out in my driveway now because you don't uh, want to run that all over your floor or anything. So I'm just going to let it drain off there and it'll go where it goes. Probably most of it's going to go across my driveway. But uh, when you're draining this off too, actually the, uh, the water that you uh, use to soak your straw, it's kind of like a natural herbicide. So uh, you don't want to run it into any of your flower or gardens or vegetable gardens or anything so keep that in mind so we're just gonna let all that water drain off and uh then we're gonna spread it out on the table so from this point on i'm gonna be using gloves we gotta let the straw cool and dry for a while that's gonna happen on the table so I'll come back in a minute So that cooler's gonna be heavy. Uh, I'm gonna go dump it on the table. So I enlisted the help of my handsome young assistant there. And uh, so now we're just gonna spread the straw out on the table and we're gonna let it air dry for quite a while, probably a couple of hours. A lot of people pack it in the buckets or the bags or whatever you're using way too wet. And uh, remember, whenever you're growing mushrooms, a little too dry is always better than too wet. Uh, too wet's just going to kill your growth. Um, so the straw is going to cool rapidly and it's going to start to lose moisture. We're going to let it air dry until the surface actually starts to look a little dry on the straw. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what that looks like. And then we'll mix our spawn in and pack it in the bucket. This is another good trick too, guys. I wanted to show you this when you're doing straw. Obviously, you know, I have the straw evenly spread out on the table. Uh, I just have a fan here 
and I got the fan just blowing across the table and uh, that's gonna air dry your straw a lot faster. And uh, so that's a, that's a nice trick to uh, cut down your dry time quite a bit. So I'm gonna let the fan run on it for a little while here till this top surface starts to look a little dry. Then I'll probably uh, just turn it over by hand and kind of remix it and let it air dry for another little bit. And uh, once that looks dry again, we'll be ready to mix our spawn in. There's a little bit of an art to getting this straw to perfect field capacity. So what I typically do is lay it all out on the table, spread it out evenly, get the fan running on low, and let it go for about an hour. And then at that point, I'll come through and turn everything over like I'm doing here, let it go for about another hour, and then it should be perfect. Uh, the goal is you don't want it soggy, you just want it moist. So if you follow that, it should be about perfect. All right, so here's our bag of spawn. Uh, this is about four pounds of uh, wheat spawn. And I'm just going to cut the top off the bag and evenly spread it through the straw and mix it in just a little bit. You can see there's some chunks in here. Uh, that's pretty common. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. There's some chunks in there. There's going to be some chunks in your grain spawn. Just kind of break those up with your fingers when you mix your spawn in. And uh, you're good to go. You just want everything evenly distributed as you can get it and broken up because each one of these little grains is going to be an inoculation point. So uh, for this particular application, you want everything uh, broken up. So here we go. This straw is looking perfect to me. I have all our spawn broken up and mixed in. And again, the reason you wanna break all your spawn up and mix it in really well and evenly is because each one of those little grain kernels is gonna be a inoculation point. And you don't want any areas of straw packed in tight uh, with no grain because if you do that, that's where your contamination is gonna start. So it's all mixed in and looking good. So we're gonna pack our bucket. So as you're packing your bucket, you want to periodically just really push down on your straw and pack it in there. You don't want any air pockets at all. That's the goal. So we're going to try and pack it in there as tight as we can. And again, having your straw shredded helps with that a lot with the compaction. All right, so our bucket is all packed up with sub and we are about to the end here. I did have enough to fill this bucket, but just barely. Believe it or not, you guys can see there's nothing left on the table. Our bucket's all jammed full of straw and spawn, and it's ready to incubate. So now we're going to talk about that. So where a lot of people go wrong with the, uh, the straw and buckets is they do everything right, fill the bucket up, and they just leave it in open air. And what happens is more often than not, unless you live in a tropical rainforest, these holes need to be your fruiting sites. And what will happen is because these are exposed to open air, these holes will dry out. And when your holes dry out, the mycelium will pan there and it won't be able to form your oyster mushrooms. So you need to keep those holes moist while this is incubating inside the bucket. So there's some different ways to accomplish that. Uh, some people put like some uh, micropore or cloth tape over the holes until they see pins starting to push the tape out. What I like to do is what I'm going to exactly what I'm going to do with this bucket. I like to put them in these garbage cans. So I have some of these black plastic garbage cans and I've drilled eight two inch holes with a hole saw. And I just have those holes stuffed with polyfill. And I'll sit the bucket right inside this garbage can, put the lid on, and uh, it will incubate in there. And what, I've, what I do is I just mist 
<clears throat> lightly mist the inside of the bin. And every once in a while, you know, every couple few days, I'll pop the lid and check it and just make sure that there's a little condensation on the edges. And that will give enough moisture to your bucket so that your holes won't dry out on you. So I'm going to move. I'm going to put the bucket inside our garbage can here, pop the lid on. Uh, the polyfill is going to let a little air exchange in there to, uh, to keep a little fresh airflow going, but not so much that it's going to dry our holes out on our bucket. And I'm just going to periodically check it every couple days. If it needs a little misting, I'll, I'll mist. Now, I'm not going to miss the actual bucket. I'm just going to do the inside walls of the tub, just trying to maintain a high humidity environment in there. And uh, you definitely, when it looks close to uh, ready to pin, what you'll see is these holes, instead of seeing the straw in there, they'll look all white and fuzzy. And when that happens, you really need to check it at least once a day. Because when the pins with these oyster mushrooms, when they start to pin, they go really fast. So as soon as you see those pins, uh, we're going to move. That's when you need to get the bucket out of the can and move it into fruiting conditions, which we're going to set up a little humidified fruiting chamber for our bucket. And uh, you don't want to leave it inside the garbage can uh, once it starts pinning because oysters are really sensitive to lack of light and uh, lack of fresh air so if you were to leave it in here you would just get some really long spindly ugly looking oyster mushrooms which is not what we want but this is a great environment to incubate your buckets in you could in incubate just about anything in this setup it's a great trick uh, you could do like bags you know like large diameter bags in there uh, buckets if you're doing five gallon buckets you could actually stack two in here one on top of the other the seven gallons just a little bit too tall for that so we're just gonna have one seven gallon in here it obviously you don't have to use a garbage can you could use like a large storage tote or something like that but the key is mist the inside of the walls so you maintain a high humidity environment and make sure you have you know some some holes drilled stuffed with polyfill to allow just a little fresh air exchange in because uh, our mushrooms do need a little fresh air exchange even during colonization so they don't go all anaerobic and bacterial on you. You can easily move our bucket. We got a nice handle on here. I'm going to set it right in the middle like that. And we already misted the inside of our can. And we'll just pop the lid on. And we'll come back and check on it. In a couple days i'll keep you guys updated nice thing about these garbage cans too is you can pick them up and move them wherever you want uh, i'm not going to leave them in the garage because my garage gets really hot uh, it's getting to be the hotter part of the summer here and uh, we're getting some warm days and my garage isn't really well insulated so heat is your enemy um that bucket's going to generate a lot of heat on its own from the metabolism of the mycelium so uh, you want to have it in a cooler place. You know, if you can keep it around like 65 degrees or so, that's perfect. So you could put it, you know, basically room temperature. You could put it anywhere in your house. Uh, just keep it out of direct sunlight. Uh, if you were at the, you know, the right time of year when it's not getting really hot out, you could even keep it outside. But uh, I'm going to keep it inside. I'm probably going to take it right down to my basement. And uh, every couple days... I'll just pop the lid off, take a peek, see what's going on in there, just as necessary. All right, welcome back, guys. It has been a couple weeks since we inoculated our straw bucket with Italian oyster, and I've just kept it in the basement in our uh, makeshift incubation trash can here, which works great. I have several of these, actually, So I used to do a lot of big bags and buckets and stuff like that, and uh, works out really well. So I've just been uh, popping open the lid every uh, day or two and just misting some water in there to keep it nice and moist and uh, when I mist you know I'm just missing misting the walls of the, uh, the can I just got a little little spray bottle here with uh, distilled water and just been you know misting it up and I checked it today and you can see there I'm gonna pull it out and you'll be able to see better but we got pins popping and we got some little baby Italian oysters ready to be born here. So I'm going to be moving this to a uh, makeshift fruiting chamber that I have. You definitely have to pay attention because, you know, it's in a dark CO2 rich environment in here. 
and oysters are really sensitive to that. So if you let the pins go too long in this environment, uh, they can, you know, you'll get some really long stringy oyster mushrooms, not very attractive. So you do have to be on top of it, you know, make sure you're checking it uh, when it's getting close to pinning, make sure you're popping open the lid and checking it once a day. And uh, when these pins start popping out like this, it's time to get your bucket out. So we got to get it into a environment with more fresh air. So yeah, be able to see it better here now. We got little baby Italian oyster mushrooms. That hole doesn't have any yet, but it's close. That one has some just starting to form. Some more here, more here. So they're just getting ready to blow up. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, same kind of concept I use for my fruiting chambers all the time. I just, I have a bunch of these plastic shelving units, these small plastic shelving units, and I have some wire shelving units. And uh, you can pretty much make anything you want out of them, as long as you have some big, clear plastic garbage bags. I just made some extra long supports, and I got a shelf on the bottom, wire shelf on top, and uh, I have slits, like usual, down three sides of the fruiting chamber. So slit on the end, slits all the way down on both sides, not on the back side where the humidifier is. This is just a ultrasonic visible mist humidifier. And uh, I'm going to run this and uh, I'll have to balance it out a little bit. My ambient humidity is a little higher now because it's the summertime. I don't have any fans to, I guess, vent fresh air into the fruiting chamber other than just there's a, you know, a small fan that runs, pumps the, uh, the visible mist from the ultrasonic into the fruiting chamber. But other than that, I'm just relying on these slits in the plastic to give it fresh air. And this works really well for any mushrooms that like a lot of fresh air and humidity, um, the setup does. It works for lion's mane, works for oysters, works great. And uh, it will add a little humidity to your room, wherever you're doing it at. But uh, I'm here in the basement and I run a dehumidifier down here all the time anyway. But that's the trade-off uh, with not running a fan. Fans can be tricky to, uh, you know, if you're running like a small low CFM fan into a setup like this to uh, add fresh air, it can actually be more trouble than it's worth because if you start moving in too much air, you'll actually dry your pins out even if you're pumping humidity in. As long as you slit it open on three sides like this, you'll just get enough air moving in from the outside of the fruiting chamber, just from the room in there to uh, get some beautiful oyster mushrooms. So we are ready to rock. I got the ultrasonic on about a third power, pumping some visible mist into the fruiting chamber. And uh, this is the kind of setup I like to do just because this will pretty much run itself. I have these little humidity gauges. I'll put one in there and uh, just monitor the humidity. I like to pin my oysters up around 90, 95%, actually all my mushrooms. And then uh, for maturation, you can back it off a little bit, um, but definitely for pinning, they like the humidity pretty high. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with buckets. Uh, you can fruit them outside. Uh, you just wanna make sure they're out of direct sun, direct wind. Uh, you could tuck it away in the corner of your basement, uh, your house, pretty much anywhere, and just miss the heck out of it. Uh, the thing is, with open air, uh, you really have to be on top of the misting because, uh, like, outside, if you get a windy day, like, the wind's blowing like crazy here for the last few days. If you were trying to fruit this thing outside, uh, you, would, you would really be struggling with weather like this just because the wind dries them out so fast. All right, guys, welcome back. It's time to take a peek at our Italian oyster bucket here and it is ready to start picking off some of these clusters some of the clusters are a little further behind like that one's going to get a lot bigger this one here is ready to pick um this is actually the second flush i was out of town for a little while on a fishing trip and i missed the first flush actually i missed filming it anyway <laughs> and uh so this is the second flush so it's not quite as much as i had on the first but you can see we have some really nice clusters of uh, Italian oyster there. So some of these clusters, like I said, are definitely ready to pick, like these guys here. And uh, so I'm gonna pick them off. I'll let a couple of those clusters get a little bigger. 
uh, but you can see this uh, real simple humidity chamber set up here. Grill some really nice oysters. Let me know what you guys think. Hit me up in comments if you have any questions, and I'll catch you next video.